Blog Talk Radio. On Blog Talk Radio, um, you are in for a really special treat today. Um, I have been reading the book Dog Medicine, which is actually out today, and I have the very special honor of having the author Julie Barton in the studio with me. Um, this is a just incredible book. Um, it's been really, um, it's really affected me, and it's been really therapeutic and. Again, it's just such an honor to have Julie here today on the day that it actually comes out. So we're going to be talking about the book Dog Medicine. Dog Medicine is the story of a woman in deep depression saved only by the love of a dog who taught her what true love looked like. At 22, Julie Barton collapsed on her kitchen floor in Manhattan. She was one year out of college and severely depressed. Summoned by Julie's incoherent phone call, her mother raced from Ohio to New York and took her home. Psychiatrists, therapists, and family tried to intervene, but nothing reached her until the day she decided to do one hopeful thing, adopt a golden retriever puppy she named Bunker. Dog medicine captures in beautiful, elegiac language the anguish of depression, the slow path to recovery, and the astonishing way animals can heal even the most broken hearts and minds. Join me today as I interview the author of Dog Medicine, Julie Barton, as we discuss this moving, heart-wrenching, life-saving, and life-affirming book. If you live in Portland, Oregon, come meet Julie this Friday, November 13th, for a reading at 7 p.m. at another read-through. On that note, I'm going to welcome Julie into the studio. Hi, Julie. How are you? Thanks for being here today. Hi. Thank you so much. I'm so happy to be here. Thank you for that. Oh, my goodness. Thanks to you. And, and Julie, I just have to thank you for such a, a beautiful book. It's, it's hard for me to even put into words um, how this book has affected me. And I have to be honest, like I I it's a, it's it's I drew it drew me right in. Um you're you're an amazing storyteller. And so you Thank I was you. dropped right yeah, and I and you know, that's I think becoming more and more rare in this day and age and, and this is a memoir and it's it's also a different kind of memoir, which I know that some people have already been saying. I mean you've been getting a lot of buzz about this book and you've already mm-hmm. the first edition's already sold out. Yeah. And yeah, it hasn't even just, just just launched today. Um, yeah. I just want to thank you for your your amazing storytelling and for the gift of your writing and for the gift of the story. And I really had to. I'm I'm I, as I told you, I've reached the section called dog medicine, and and I I was so affected um, because it's, I I'm a huge animal lover. In addition to to being not only a writer myself, but a, a reader, a lover of literature and books. I'm an animal lover. And um, Julie, I was just wondering if you could tell us your story and, um, you know, how did this book come about? Um, of course, I'd love yeah. to ask you, how did your dog save you? But um, mm-hmm. if you could, if you could drop us into wherever it feels best for you, um, into the journey of dog medicine, how this book came to life, or what's most relevant for you in this moment. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, this is a big moment. It's a really big (laughs) moment for me to have, to talk to you today on the day of the launch. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. You know, the book, the book, it was a long time before it, it took shape, and I think that's just the the nature of writing, and it's the nature of memoir. Um, it's mm-hmm. a really, really hard process, but it's also a really beautiful process. Mm-hmm. 
I the the story. I mean, I can tell you the story in a nutshell. I don't want to spoil it for anybody who hasn't read it yet. But um, you know, I didn't know it was 1996 when I had. I don't know what you call it. You could call it a breakdown, but I couldn't go on, and I collapsed mm. on my kitchen floor. And I thought either. I'm just going to give up and lie here until I die or I'm going to kill myself or I mean I was I was extraordinarily suicidal. I was very depressed. I didn't know what was going on because in 1996 I'd never heard of depression as a disease. I didn't know what that was. It wasn't in the public lexicon. Um and so I didn't know what was going on. I just thought I was weak. I thought I was stupid. I thought there was something wrong with me. Um and so you know, my mom, I called my mom, she jumped in the car, she came and got me. Um, and I went home and I tried to regroup and I, I wanted to be an independent person. I wanted to be okay in life. And I really wasn't because my mind was not healthy. Um, mm-hmm. And doctors tried to reach me and therapists tried to reach me and my parents tried to reach me. And I was thinking further and further. Um, but all my life, all my life, dogs and animals and nature have been a deep, deep solace for me. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. And so the first idea that I had about what what might help me was getting a dog. And, Mm -hmm. um, of course, my parents were like, okay, (laughs) let's go get a dog. (laughs) And, um, And, you know, I... You know, I looked, and I didn't find him right away, but when I found him, it was like, there you are. I've been mm-hmm. looking for you. We, it was like we both felt that. It was a real amazing, I don't know, a spiritual moment where this dog and I were like, here we go. Now we're going to mm. be in this together. And I'll yeah. never forget, ever forget the first <laughs> morning I woke up with him next to me. It was the first morning of my life mm-hmm. that I woke up and oh. didn't feel dread. I didn't know mm-hmm. that I could wake up and not have that heavy feeling sitting on my chest. And then, mm-hmm. um, you know, the the story continues with me trying again at a new city. Um, and, you know, Bunker taught me so much, so, so much about, um, like, stillness, being still, being kind, um, you know, approaching people with love, and um, vulnerability, and, uh, you know, he, yeah, he changed my life. And, you know, mm-hmm. you haven't gotten there yet in the book, but there's a mm-hmm. point where um, his life is in jeopardy. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I, you know, in the past, had something been difficult, a roadblock, something really scary or challenging, I would have crawled into bed and gotten under the covers and waited for it to pass or waited for Mm -hmm. it to do me in. But with him, I was absolutely determined to save his life. And it Mm -hmm. proved to me that I had strength. I had Mm -hmm. strength and I had, I had the capacity to save him and to, you know, so he saved me and then I saved him. And then Mm -hmm. all along the way there was, you know, there was, there's, family issues that I that I learned to deal with and learn to forgive and understand and then there's there's love uh, romantic mm-hmm. love and there's friendship mm-hmm. that you know, mm-hmm. I, he taught me how to you know he taught me how to see romantic love in a whole new way because mm-hmm. um because it I didn't feel desperation in in the past. I felt with my boyfriends that if they didn't love me or call me or you know show in you know extreme or constant ways that they loved me that I wasn't okay. Mm-hmm. And with Bunker around, I I didn't need that. And and also I was able to see. Wait a minute, maybe that's not how it's supposed to be. Mm-hmm. Maybe it's supposed to just be e- easier. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Like a different um, paradigm. So, a different <clears throat> paradigm, yeah. And so, mm-hmm. you know, there's a lot of, I cover a lot of topics in the book. Um, so, you know, do you and want to talk about one in particular? Absolutely. <laughs> I So if it's okay with you, I know that you do, you said you didn't want to give away too much, but of course, um, the, I mean, the two things that really, well, actually there are, 
there are three things that really strike me so far in the book that I've, as far as I've read, and beyond just your storytelling and your writing, which is, um, again, such a gift, is, of course, is, is the topic of depression, but, and of course, dog medicine, which um, which I would love to get into um, maybe in the second half. Um, mm-hmm. But, and also just like, how, how do animals, you know, how do animals have such a different language and a different experience and I just the human animal bond is is I think extremely challenging to put into words and yet it's it's such a you know, so many people experience it and not only that but need it. I think just that yeah. um yeah. you know, and so I just, you know, I would love to explore that and I know that um you had graciously offered to maybe, maybe read something if we have time <laughs> and I know that we only have t- twenty minutes here. However, you know, um but then I have to say, Julie, that I in the very beginning I was I was very struck by is it okay if I say this? Like the, the violence that happened mm-hmm. is that or yeah. do you not wanna give that away? I mean That's so fine. Fine. so you experienced sibling violence, uh and I yeah. I was so um I was so affected by that. Um, I've been through domestic violence myself, so I could kind of relate to it. And it was just, it was very shocking. And yet I think that's why dog medicine, like the love of an animal, isn't that why that you needed that type of love, like that unconditional love and, you know, a completely different paradigm in order to heal you. Yeah. I mean, those are the those are the topics that stand out for me, but um, I'll let you yeah. well, please yeah, share Yeah, I stories. mean, dog medicine... Yeah, dog medicine for me started very, very early because, Mm -hmm. um, you know, when I was not feeling safe or okay, um, I would take my dog into my room and and it was the touch of, you know, having a, a living, breathing being with me, leaning with me, leaning on me or you know, looking my toes or anything, you know, it was a distraction, but it was also a really, really deep solace for me as a kid. Um, and, you know, I was always identified as such an animal lover. And I had, I had a menagerie in my bedroom as a kid. I had guinea pigs and hamsters and, you know, I couldn't get enough. It was really, and I think that part of the reason dog medicine is so effective or cat medicine, or, I mean, I've heard mm. people horse medicine, um, mm. because they meet us in an entirely different way. They meet us without words, which mm. is a real gift. They meet us with um, optimism and a, and a stillness, and like they don't have a tortured consciousness. They mm. just don't. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, you know, there's studies about the the effect of um, a dog on the human body and you know they re- they li- they literally release oxytocin when you're with the dog um mm-hmm. i think that's what it is but they they make you feel calm like i watch i i i'll be walking down the sidewalk and somebody will have a dog or i'll, ha- I'll have my dog and the whole even that the social interaction changes a door mm-hmm. opens hmm. you somebody yes. leans down to pet a dog and starts a conversation mm-hmm. You know, and that was one of the things that was really incredible for me when I first got Bunker was I could talk to people about this beautiful animal that I had, and mm. it it was a door. It was a door. Hmm. Um, and, and Fascinating. They're, they're perfectly willing to lie in bed with you. And also, they need you. I mean, that was one of the big mm-hmm. issues of, of getting Bunker was, Mm-hmm. I it was my responsibility to take care of him and I was absolutely sure that I could do it and I hadn't been sure of anything in years mm-hmm. and I knew I could train him and I knew I could teach him and I knew I could keep him healthy and feed him and walk him and I could do all of that and that made me feel capable because when you're mm-hmm. depressed a lot of people think you know she can't do anything so let's just let her have some space and let's just leave her alone and let her sleep and let her do whatever and you start to believe that maybe they're not letting me or not asking me to do anything because they don't think I'm capable because the depressed mm. mind will mm-hmm. will twist anything. It will twist anything into a way to make you feel bad or feel worse. Um, and your dog needs you, you know, your dog needs you to get up, mm-hmm. needs you to go outside, needs you to, and, and mm-hmm. that to me was great medicine. Just that need mm-hmm. that I knew I could fulfill. Um, mm, I love that. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah, and so, um, 
you know, and the depression is it's a wily and difficult disease and it is a very much a disease and i'm i'm very open with people about about my depression obviously um and i treat it like any disease in that if i feel like i'm thinking i go straight to my um therapist to my counselor to and if you know i need to change my medication which i am on medication and i will always be on medication um for the rest of my life cuz i've tried to go off and it just doesn't work um but you know it's it's a real challenge you know 350 million people suffer from it one in four people in america suffer from depression every 13 Mm, minutes somebody commits suicide and you know i it's the third suicide is the third leading cause of death in the united states um behind cancer Mm. and heart disease and we're talking about cancer and we're talking about heart disease we're not really talking about suicide the way that we need to yet the way we're that not. we you know everybody's so scared of it and there's so much shame and i i understand so that's why i feel like this is such an important story because it's it's easy to talk about depression when you go in through a dog when you go in through the mm. most the least depressing species on earth you know <laughs> i mean <laughs> oh my right? goodness what I mean, a great analogy <laughs> yeah we it's can so talk true. about this we can talk about this and not feel mm. shame and not feel fear and not feel sorrow and sadness and actually realize mm. that those are wonderful things to feel. It's okay to feel sorrow. It's okay. I mean, that's the problem with depression. So many people are like, I, I shouldn't feel bad. I shouldn't feel sad. I shouldn't feel this or that. And that's actually one of the leading causes of depression is de- denying your emotions. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, I, I the more I really wrote wrote, the more I realized like, yeah, this is the this is a really good way in. And also, hmm. you know, when you're writing memoir and you want to write it from your soul, from the center of the core of your heart, it has to be the thing you know is more true to you than anything in the whole entire world. Mm. And, yes. you know, <clears throat> I always say there are two things I'm sure of in this world. One is that my dog saved my life. Mm. And two is that I married the right man. Thank goodness. Mm. But number one is is a, nice. is a huge. It's a it, it was a huge thing for me, and it was also pretty scary to think mm-hmm. I'm going to dedicate years and years of my life to talking about my dog who died in 2007. Mm-hmm. You know, I went to I, I wrote this in a recent interview that I went to a high school when I was in the beginning phases of writing this story, and I said to the class, I was teaching a memoir class, and I said, you know, I'm writing a book about when I was in my early 20s and I was depressed and nothing helped, and the only thing that saved me was a dog. And this young man in the class laughed out loud, Mm -hmm. not in a nice way, in a -hmm. a way that was like, that's stupid, you know. Mm -hmm. And I thought, okay, okay, you know. Then you know you're on to something. (laughs) I'm going to take that and go, you know what, I'm going to tell this story. I'm going to tell the truth of this story. I'm really going to tell the truth of this story. And people may not get it at first, and that's okay. That's fine. Like, I'll lead them in gently. Mm. <laughs> this is and, my truth. And this is the one it's thing your I know truth. for sure. It's what you know for sure, and it's also your story, and there's there's nothing right or wrong about that. It's your story. Yeah. And it's yeah. having the courage. It's having the courage to tell your story. Um, yeah. I think that's what everybody wants, and so you're giving other people permission to to you know, let their lives be what they are. And yeah, so no I matter thank who you, I thank you for that. <laughs> yeah, no matter who laughs. Thank I mean, you. that's just thank that's you. just fear. <laughs> that's fear coming it from is. A, a young it man. It is. It is. Yeah, yeah, it is. But it also was I, really it was enlightening for me because I went, okay, mm-hmm. all right, I'm gonna I'm gonna still do this. I'm gonna keep going. Mm-hmm. And yeah. and. When, and that's the beautiful thing about mm. memoir is that when you do really write your truth, when you do really sit down and write the scariest, hardest, most beautiful things, what you'll discover, mm. I really feel like 99% of the time, what you'll discover is there's so much love in mm. in everybody and in everything mm-hmm. and in earth and in so many creatures. And, you know, it, everybody is it, we're coming at it with good intentions, you know. I mean, even my brother, you know, I, I realized writing the story, like, when this happened, he was a child, right? Mm-hmm. 
I mean, he mm-hmm. he was doing some some pretty horrific things, and I suffered pretty greatly. But he was also a child, and he was hurting, and it was a real revelation for me to write that and think really deeply about that. Um, mm-hmm. And it changed it changed me. It really did. And I and I well, I'm and I'm glad that it did. And I I have to say that um, you know, so my heart goes out to you that you um, suffered through that and that but also that you came out of it and I know that um your publisher Think Peace Publishing is all about um you know representing life affirming stories of, of positive recovery and um so there's there is a there's the other side to no matter how much no matter how much you suffered um there's you can pull out of it I really believe that and I I also have to say that that just the love of a an animal is a, it is a different kind of love and and when you need when you've been through trauma sometimes that's the only kind of love that that can pull you out of it because it's it mm-hmm. is pure and it's so different um mm-hmm. it also, it can protect you and it's that's why I think Julie that I had to I to really really slow down when I reached the part in your book about dog medicine um because mm-hmm. I was so affected um, mm. after having, I've been through trauma myself and it, it, I was so affected. I just, I'm like, I had to, to breathe and slow down and, and let it be my medicine too. So I just, again, just thank mm. you for that. And, mm. and I, and I was wondering, I know we only have a few minutes and I, I do want to, um, let people remind people that, um, you are going to be at another read through here in Portland, Oregon on Friday, November 13th at 7 p.m. for anyone who wants to come and hear you um, talk about your book and read from your book. And um, we yeah. just wanted and to mention that. Friend, it's a dog-friendly event. Dogs are welcome dog to come. Dog-friendly event. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> love it, love it, love it. <laughs> and I have to say, I just recently, I've always loved animals, and I have cats, and I was visiting family back east, and um, my sister has two dogs, and I, you know, one's a puppy, a four-month-old lab, and the other one's a year-old border collie. And I was just, I I experienced my dog medicine, too. I was just like, mm. I can't believe I've been missing this, and now I need to get a dog. So yeah. <laughs> uh, that's a different <laughs> subject. But um, but um, with the few minutes that we have left here, um, Julie, first um, I want to mention, um, you know, first of all, how can people get your book, um, Dog Medicine? Again, it's out today. I mean, how exciting is that? And congratulations. I mean, just <laughs> congratulations as, a, as an author, as a writer, and just, you know, with your, your first book, I mean – you yeah, really, know. you know, yeah. it's so exciting. Um, and again, Thank that's you. the first yeah. It's already sold out. <laughs> um, yeah. And it's just coming out We're today. Our, so. Yeah, I know. <laughs> we sold out of our first uh, edition before it, it got it was launched, and you know there have been some indications that we're onto something because you know that certain articles you know have been shared several thousand times and you're like okay mm-hmm. I think we're on to something mm-hmm. but people can get Absolutely. the book um you know first go to your independent bookstore go to another mm-hmm. read through you know go to the and if they don't have it just ask them to order it um mm-hmm. but you can also get it on you know palace.com you can get it on um amazon.com mm-hmm. you can get it at barnes and noble um and if your local bookstore doesn't have it in stock ask them to stock it tell them they won't yes. be sorry <laughs> absolutely absolutely again this is really a breakthrough book and memoir and it's been such an honor to read it and so julie i wanted to take a really really short break and we have about six minutes um but would you be open to reading something from your book um i'd if, be if, happy if, to yeah okay okay awesome all right um we're gonna take a really short break you've been listening to the wellness coach on block talk radio and my guest today is julie barton the author of dog medicine we'll be right back Hi, everyone. Welcome back. You're listening to The Wellness Coach on Blog Talk Radio. My very special guest today is author Julie Barton, and she has written a memoir called Dog Medicine, and she's very graciously offered to read from her book today. Um, In our final remaining moments here, um, Julie is going to um, share with you um, just a little bit of this extremely uh, heartwarming therapeutic um, once-in-a-lifetime read book, Dog Medicine, 
and highly recommend that you go pick up your own copy. Um, and like Julie said, you know, ask your bookstore to, to bring it in. Um, and, you know, reading uh, books and, and reading are very much alive, and thank goodness, and stories, stories are still alive, and we encourage you to share your own story, and thank you so much, Julie, for sharing yours today. Um, so My go pleasure. ahead, the, the floor is yours. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. So um, I'll, I'll read a little bit from the dog medicine chapter that you mentioned. Mm-hmm. Um, not the whole thing, but parts of it. <laughs> and uh, here we go. It's called Dog Medicine. It's midway through the book, and it's mid-July of 1996. Bunker had been with me for three days, and we'd established a routine. Wake up, pee, poop, eat, walk, play, nap, and repeat. He was already mostly house-trained. He'd had only one accident on the carpet. I taught him to sit and make eye contact, and he did so eagerly, wanting to please, ready for the next command. Waking up in the morning was getting easier, but something dark still lingered, and on this particular day, for no discernible reason, the darkness reared its ugly head, unannounced, worse than ever like a thread-thin worm that had covertly dug itself back into my body from underneath a fingernail. It said, oh, no, you don't. I see you trying to pretend you're happy, trying to fool people that you're not a lazy, ugly idiot. I felt punished, as if my captor had caught me trying to escape. Perhaps those awful thoughts had never left, but just lay dormant for a while. I wanted to fight. I tried hard to push the negativity away, but it persisted. Just getting a dog can't cure me. I thought I was the problem. I wasn't strong enough. I was a failure, a crazy person. I was truly unlikable. I believed this like I believed that the earth was round, something I couldn't see but understood to be true because I had been told it was so. I walked to the maroon living room couch and sat down, feeling both afraid and comforted by the reappearing blackness, comforted because I knew depression so well. Depression was my companion. The seductive descent into the awful depths marked the return of an old, dark friend that I genuinely, honestly missed. My face was still in my hands when I felt warmth on my toes. Bunker had walked over to me and sat down on my feet. I pulled my hands away from my face and saw him sitting, looking up at me, his butt squarely on my toes, his back leaning into my shins. His face held curiosity, his fever puppy energy completely contained. He glanced away for a few moments and then turned back as if to ask, Better? Really? I thought, really? Could this dog somehow sense when I was sad and comfort me? I'd heard of seeing eye dogs. I'd heard of dogs who could sniff out drugs in a suitcase, but a dog who could detect sadness? I wondered if these new psychiatric drugs were causing me to overly anthropomorphize my dog, but I needed so desperately to be comforted. I needed a companion who had no judgment, with whom I had no history, who would make it known that I was loved, who would never, ever hurt me. I don't know why it worked. All I can ponder is that this kind of healing required the safety of a true companion and no resistance. Bunker was still sitting on my feet, still looking at me. His feather soft fur tickled my legs and I picked him up, his puppy legs dangling. I cradled his body. He let his tongue drop out of the side of his opened mouth. That sight alone made me smile. I leaned back into the couch and held him to my chest. He curled into me as if he felt as protected as I did. I took a deep breath and felt the blackness loosen its grip. Dog medicine. I'd found it, and I swallowed it whole. Mm. Wow. Um, I just got chills. and um, that's, You couldn't say it better than that. And thank you so much for sharing that with us. Um, and just for anyone, we have, yeah, thank you. We have a a few live listeners. Um, we're about to go off the air in about 25 seconds here. Um, we, there, the recording will continue. You can listen to the replay if you want to hear the very, very end of this. Um, blog talk radio will allow us to talk just for a few more, more, more minutes here. Um, we just want to thank you so much for listening live everyone. And, and Julie, thank you so much for being here. 
um, I just really appreciate it, and it was just, um, it's been such a, so therapeutic to read your book, and I just, um, again, really thank you for for um, having the courage to share your story. And um, Thank you. I'm, yeah, so, and again, um, for anyone who wants to get your book, um, again, let's just share that information. So the book, of course, is called Dog Medicine, and again, um, where can they find it? And also, where can they find out more about you? Um, and mm-hmm. anything else that you'd like to mention? Yeah, my website is byjuliebarton.com, B-Y, juliebarton.com. That has a lot of the information about where you can meet me or if you'd like me to, you know, come to your town and I'm not I'm not coming there yet, send me a note and we'll see if we can get that working. And, um, mm-hmm. yeah, go to your local bookstore and ask for it. And if they don't have it, order it and... Um, it is. It is the first print run did sell out, but we have more on the way. So don't fret. It will only be a day. <laughs> don't, <or two>. worry. <laughs> don't worry. Don't <laughs> worry. Um, and also, your your publisher is Think Peace, Think Peace Publishing. Um, so I yeah. look forward to meeting both you and Adam on Friday. And um, again, thank, thank you so you. much for being They're here today, Julie. And um, enjoy My the pleasure. rest of your day. Enjoy the rest of this thank momentous you. day. And um, congratulations. <laughs> thank you so much. I appreciate it okay. so much. Take care. I'll see you soon. All right. Thank you. You too. Thank you. Bye. Bye.